Okay, so our uh, idea is to make this nano doctor octopus. It's basically an approach that uh, we, we, we looked at what, what should be done and we tried to use uh, one step away from existing technologies um, and uh, to build a product which essentially what it does is it looks around uh, and it touches the cell and it looks at the surface and uh, it can be used for marking or killing of any cells. And we are focusing on senescent cells uh, specifically for longevity cases. So the aspects of our approach that makes it unique is that it, uh, it detects the cell based upon an array of 36 aptamers. What that means is it looks for 36 different uh, bind, uh, 36 arrangements of up to somewhere between 10 or 15 kinds of proteins. So it's looking for arrangement of pro uh, markers rather than just a single marker. And uh, uh, we're gonna do this selection based upon, by creating a billion different version of these nanoparticles and we are gonna uh, analyze them by uh, next gen sequencing to identify the ones that bound the cell of interest. And not only are we gonna bind it to the cell, but we are also going to have an actuator in there that uses the same mechanism that is used by T cell, our immune cells to kill uh, other cells. Uh, uh, these are these receptor, these tiny ligand, uh, little ligand clusters that will trigger an apoptosis. So it triggers, it tells the cell to kill itself. And we have something known as kinetic proofreading. What that means is unless the binding event occurs, or, or, or unless, it, unless the particle binds the cell for a certain length of, of time, it's not going to trigger the cell death. So it basically touches around and whatever that it touches for a longer time, that means it's binding it strongly, it's gonna kill it. And the way in which it binds is by looking at an arrangement of proteins. It's not looking for just a single protein or a single marker, but it's looking for a variety of markers in a specific arrangement. And our hypothesis is that the arrangement of the markers is specific to the cell. So this is what the picture actually looks like. So you have a cell and the red little dot that you see is an origami, and if you zoom in, it's, it has aptamers, there are just four of them at a specific arrangement. And it's because of the, uh, because of the arrangement of the aptamers the, and uh, it's, it's sensing what is on the surface. And if it matches it, it sticks on and holds on there. And if it holds on there, it's going to kill the cell. Here I don't have a picture, in the, in the picture I don't have the actuation. And like I said, the novel aspect is that it's looking for multivalency, it's not looking for a single marker. Uh, it can, and all the, 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 the origami itself and the construct itself can be, uh, can be selected by sequencing. Uh, it can actuate, it not only can it sense, it'll kill it, and also it has a proofreading mechanism as, uh, an, as, a, as, an, as a potential approach to reduce crosstalk. So it doesn't, it's so that it doesn't kill a cell that it's not supposed to. So the construct itself looks like this, so this little, picture is that of the origami and each number represents a particular aptamer that binds one of these 10 markers. These, these 10 proteins have been identified as markers for senescent cells already and each number tells you an aptamer, a weak binder to that and it's arranged in this particular order. Does this uh, order remind you of anything? Anyone? Yeah. No, it's, it's actually 3.14159, so, uh, yeah, yes, yeah. So you look carefully. So, uh, uh, so, so again, so we have not actually shown the uh, arrangements on how uh, it triggers apoptosis, but the idea is this arrangement of this, these binders is a signature of the cell. So it is reasonable to assume that every cell in your body has a unique signature of the surface receptors, and the surface, and the reason why we think about this is so every cell interacts with its environment in subtly different ways. We know that. And the way in which it interacts with the world is through its surface, through its surface receptors. For, so it is reasonable to assume that the arrangement of receptors or the arrangement of the surface is a unique identifier to the cell itself. And that's what we are looking for. And again, we have not shown the mechanism by which we will trigger the apoptosis. So the way in which we are structuring the milestones and budget, uh, Martin will actually explain that. But the idea is basically to quickly verify the basic 
uh, mechanisms and then to scale up from there. So we're looking at a phase one, which is the proof of concept uh, dealing with senescence. And we figured that would take about three years and $15 million to identify the items that you see on the uh, slide. How do we go to the next slide? And there's an assumption that you actually need a market, which we don't have for, for senescence right now. So we're assuming a cancer market. And um, that means that you actually need to go through development and clinical trials. So this is the development phase, phase two, um, which you, would take you through two things. One would be a cancer diagnostic, and the other would be a therapeutic using the mechanism that we weren't showing before on how aptosis occurs. Um, and that would take you through uh, your initial preclinical work for, and the work for diagnostic and therapy. Then phase three would be the actual clinical trials and production of the material. You can see the whole, the overall uh, cost of the whole program would probably be about four hundred million dollars. Yep. So, so the, the core technology itself, we are focusing right now uh, to, so in principle, if we can validate this for one particular kind of cell, it's reasonable that we can extend it out to multiple cells. And due to the fact that we have single cell sequencing, RNA-seq uh, already uh, existing, it, it would be pretty straightforward to think that we can, we can scale it up to, you know, study uh, you know, on tissue levels, you know, if you have, you know, if you take tissue samples from different body parts and uh, use uh, existing uh, single cell sequencing methods to identify the cell receptors on the surface, the arrangement of the cell receptors. So in some sense, uh, we want to try to uh, validate this for senescent cells because we have those 10 markers already done. But once that is done, once that, that fa once, once we have actually validated it, we can extend it to any cell. And because of the fact that we are using sequencing and single cell uh, existing technologies, we should be able to scale it up quite quickly. Does that help? Yeah. So it doesn't have to be personalized? Not necessarily. I mean, it could be. But it's not necessary. We are going with the hypothesis that every single cell has a signature that is conserved between people. Okay. But we don't know that. We don't. That is that 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 is a hypothesis. Which uh, I mean, looking at the data, look, looking at the really preliminary data that is coming out on the surface markers, it seems reasonable. And from first principles, it seems reasonable. But we don't know the answer to that question. Same distance apart from we don't know the answer to that question. 